Okay, welcome everybody to Coffee and Art in the Morning. I'm Dee Dee. Don't forget to play. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I hope everybody had a good Mother's Day weekend. Thought we'd do a little bit of... Um, I'm kind of zoomed in so that we can show things kind of close. If it's too close, I'll just back, 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 back out. You know, back up the truck. Hey, Miko. Beep, beep, beep. So I had a fun uh, Mother's Day weekend with the family at the lake and hanging out with uh, everybody and had a good weekend. Um, <clears throat> I got a few things to do today. My throat's a little congested again you know sleeping with a fan on my face may be part of it maybe just being at the lake I don't know um, but anyway I got my hot coffee so I did get some happy mail from Sharon L she sent us a bunch more post-it notes and some other little things <coughs> I'll probably show that after a while because I, I'm also working on something for her so I might do a combo thing so when I when I work on what I'm doing for her I'll show the happy mail in one sitting so because it's so it goes together so I'm doing that I've got a couple commissions I'm working on um, I did post the picture that I did out of the wild I did this uh, panda um, with the Holbies, and so I finished that one, and I did post this, trying to get it to kind of, I got to move that fan, it's making my throat dry. <laughs> so I did finish this one, out of Bennett Klein Wild, and the next thing I do want to do is the Holbies and Hedgies. So the next time I work in this book, I want to do the hedgehogs. So that one, thanks guys. I'm trying to get it to kind of, but I did post it on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. The other thing that I want to try to finish this week is the mermaid out of, where's the cover? Let me get to the cover, hang on. The Fantasia. The panda is acrylic paint. The, the background of the panda, the black background, is uh, acrylic paint. Yeah. Uh, so I want to finish our mermaid that we started last week. Shading this one. I mean, it started shading all. Now, this is going to have probably stickles or something glittery on her tail. But i you know got to do all the rest of it. So I want to finish her this week. And a couple other pages that are in progress. But as you'll know, we have been working in our little mini magazine. <clears throat> little mini magazine. Calling it the mini magazine mind mapping idea collecting prompt playground. <laughs> uh, and I did say again earlier, um, Lisa had suggested to us that if you don't want to cut this up. See, mine's not very, it's not perfectly even on the top where I cut it, which I don't mind. And it is quite a bit of work to cut with an X-Acto knife and a metal ruler. <clears throat> so if you don't want to do the cutting of a magazine in half, then uh, like Kinko's or your copy shop staples, anywhere like that that has, you know, cuts, you know, cut things down at the copy machine, they'll cut it in half for you for, I think Lisa paid a dollar, less than a dollar fifty, I think, to cut one in half. So um, if you want to just have it cut for you and you have a copy shop, handy um then just go have it done for you for a, a you know a couple of dollars and uh, then you don't have to worry about it i mean you still have to glue it all and everything you know <laughs> so i want to do a little bit more in this hey king gore anybody else popping in thanks for being here so i want to do a little bit more in this but i want to kind of back up a minute and show you how um it kind of in combination with the large magazine journals that we did a few years ago, the full size ones, and um, some of my desk journals. So, and a desk journal is really for me is just a journal where if you have excess paint you want to scrape off, excess uh, little bits of collage you want to glue in, and it's just a journal and it doesn't have to be. I've been I've always used um, well for since let's see. 
seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Probably since 2007, I've used uh, the Barnes and Noble leather ones, and they're expensive. Not not going to say they're not, but if you use just one a year, then it's not too bad. Uh, of course, I've used other things too, composition books, and I have a huge, big. Let's see, it's under here. Let's see if I can get it. Uh, I don't know if I can get that one out. Hang on. Um, So this big Mama Jamba one that I made out of chipboard and just uh, signatures of paper. This one, see, this is <laughs> this is a hot mess. This is just rubber banded, and again, you know, rubber bands will dissolve or disintegrate. You know, if you want to, <laughs> yeah, exactly, paint slapping book. If you want to uh, put twine or ribbon or something that's going to last a long time to me if a rubber band breaks i just put a new rubber band in and i also just do this for convenience uh if i have a bunch of ribbons in his heart to show all that but uh so anyway this one was probably started maybe in 15 or 16 anyway I, i'll i'll show you some of my desk journals this one's bigger than the other ones that i've been using this one is this one was about eight by eight by eleven and a half eight eight by you know I guess I I think I just used one of the bit the um, copy paper I could fold in half so this is about an eight by eleven something like that and uh, so uh, that one's later but anyway my point is is have some kind of even if it's just folded paper copy paper with uh, rubber band signatures in a book to keep um so when you have a lot of excess paint on your um you know when you left over in wherever you keep your palette is and you're you have a project you can scrape it into some kind of a journal or little collage bit same thing so i'm going to show you some of the ones that i've done that in and then we're going to continue by doing more of that type of thing in this book our little magazine journal a little cut down magazine so if you're watching this on youtube this is a live show on Ustream with the live chat audience so i am talking to people in chat i will be repeating myself i will be answering questions uh, you know so yeah, if you're watching on YouTube, just know that I am talking to a live audience here. And uh, if you are here in the live audience and you have a question, put it in caps for me, hey, TNT, so I see it because the chat goes pretty quickly zooming by. Okay, so um, I'm going to, I'll show you the last, I'll show you 2011, 2012. Uh, I won't, because I'm not going to show you all of them, <laughs> but I'll kind of show you some of the ones that I've done over the years. And again, I usually have one a year. This one got so bulky, the the first, the th this one from 2007, that I took it, took the spine off, punched holes in it, and put it on big binder rings. Well, I've since needed those rings for something else, another project. <laughs> So I took the rings out so I could use them for another project. I will deconstruct a journal or a sketchbook or any. I'll deconstruct it in a heartbeat if I need it or cut it up and use it for something else. So, uh, but this was one of my first ones. And again, I just wanted to show you this because I, I just punched holes in the leather and punched holes in the papers and put big rings in this one because it got so bulky. Uh, yeah, you scavenge your own stuff. Yeah, exactly. So that was like, I think, 2007. And I have dates in some of them, but then I think this one went to 2008. And I try to get different ones every year. And um, again, this one got to right about there. And then I guess 2009 came along. So this one only got about half full. But remember, while I'm doing stuff like this book, I'm also doing the kind of same thing in little books like these, which I'll, I'll show you these again as well. So you can just kind of call this segment the um, art journal desk, uh, art desk journal flip thing. So then this one was, I think, from 2009. 
then the next one here's one from 2010 and again it got to about right about there 2010 so um, you know and these again it's gonna warp your spine some if you don't want your spine to warp go front to back back to front like we talked about with the magazine journals especially magazine journals because there's you know like this one has um, four sections and the, the spine will really warp right on um, <laughs> I have yeah I have some I bought, bought rings since then Valerie but at the moment so all I did was put a rubber band around and put it back on the shelf so and just didn't take the time to re re ring it you know um, so if you don't want your spines to start warping, then you want to work front to back, back to front. Now, if it's a kind of, some kind of a daily journal or something like that, or data journal, you you know obviously aren't going to want to do that. Uh, maybe I would suggest like painting all your pages first. You know, getting some paint slapped on them if you're going to use it for a daily journal. I, I don't I don't do daily I don't journal like a diary. I don't diary stuff. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that one was, I think, a 7, 8, I think this was 9 or 10. And then I got 11 and 12. And these are the ones that I was going to show you more out of. And also these. Um, and then I think from, I don't know, 14 or 15, that's when I started using this big one. And it's all essentially the same type of thing. You take, here, let me move these two over the side. You'll take an excess paint or collage bits and you glue them in or scrape your paint. So like, let's say I had a bunch of red left over here. This is dried from the weekend project. You just scrape it up and scrape it in. Or you can do it with a brush. You can do it with your fingers. We're going to do some finger painting today. And use up your paint from your projects whatever they may be in your desk journal I call them desk journals because they sit close to my desk <laughs> Derek. Uh, so yeah so you can see this one this one is just a bunch of folded I'm trying to find the centers of one these I think they're um 11 by 14 copy paper folded in half and a bunch of them put together to make signatures and then rubber banded around. You can see the rubber bands broken on that one and on that one. Um, again, you could, you don't have to use rubber bands. I do it for convenience and to show, for, show, for the show here. Uh, let me see here. So you can see here's some leftover stencil stuff, how to extra flower. Um, there's my hand carved one of my hand carved stamps so if you keep a journal like this handy and that's why I call it a desk journal if you don't keep it on your desk or right at hand you won't do it you won't open because you know you just open it to a random page and start scraping paint or slapping down some collage or cleaning off a stamp or um, the reverse of what's on your um, stencil you won't use it if you don't have it handy here's some leftover stenciling and then what you can do after so here's an example of the after so I had some leftover collage stuff I scraped some paint and then I went back you go back at when you have any free time or you're just sitting at your desk and you pick up your desk journal and go back and paint and play okay you're like well most of mine don't crinkle because I use um, I use craft paint I use I like Americana and no they're not sponsoring me I just love my deco art Americana they the if you use a uh, an expensive or more expensive uh, heavy bodied acrylic paint like in the tubes that have a lot of binders that have a sheen to them and that's what can make your pages stick I found now some of them you're gonna hear a little bit of crunch and that's probably mostly because if I have a lot of weight on them but for the most part listen they don't they don't stick you know um, so I'm trying to find a couple more finished pages in here 
Um, all right, so here's some leftover collage bits, some stencil in the background. And, and a lot of times I'll just use, um, I'll go, I'll use the color theme of whatever is there. So let's say I had a bunch of scraped brown and gold stuff on here. Then I go back and I have this girl that was dressed in brown. She fit this page, you know. I just can flip through and find some place to glue down. That sort of thing. Um, so there's just all kinds of in process. And I just, like I said, I'll, I kind of keep them handy. Here's a napkin. Now, I will say this. Napkins, if you if you glue down napkins, they can have a tendency to stick unless you glue them down with golden matte medium. If you just glue crunchy uh, matte um, what do you call it, napkins down, it's because of the wrinkles in the napkins that sometimes they'll stick, but I really don't have too much trouble with, with it. So again, scraped paint, I had a couple pieces of washi tape left over, slap that in there, so it's anything. And then again, you can go back and, and play, you, you know, if you need inspiration, and you can't, you can't think of anything, oh, I don't know what to do. Well, go back to your magazine journals, whatever size they are. Uh, I mean, your uh, desk journals. And then go back and play in them. So we're going to do some more of this kind of stuff in the magazine journal. Okay, so your magazine journal can be your desk journal. You know, it, it can, they can both be the same thing. Just kind of flip in here. Um, and this one I did go front to back and all through it. So there's there's stuff all the way through this one. Uh, but this is a big mama jamba. <laughs> I have, uh, Valerie, I have a whole bunch of videos. Whole bunch of videos on napkin journaling. Just go to my mixed media playlist and look for napkin journals. Tons. Tons of videos on napkin journal. Okay, so the next ones I got here, these two, I think this one was from 2011 and this one's from 2012. I'm not even quite sure when these were started or done. Now, let me say this on those little composition books. These are not like the the big composition books are are more sewn in. They're just sturdier. I have had a few pages fall out of these. But I um, I just tape them back in. But these are just the little mini composition books that you get. You know, I, I really like to stock up on these when um, ABG, Corin, CB. There's CB. We're talking about CB needs a face on face on Twitter. <laughs> hey Abby, girl. Anybody else I missed? Um, you can use your regular size composition books or any kind of, you know, composition books. We get them, like you can get them at Walmart during uh, back to school for 10 cents. 10 cents for a composition book. I think these are a quarter during school startup. So, you know, and they come in purple, red, green, black, yellow. I'm trying to think of all the blue, all the different color covers that... And it's all this is essentially the same thing, okay? It's scraping and using, see like here, this page started coming loose, so I put a little piece of tape in there. Um, so, you know, they're really not meant to be full-on works of art. But, you know, I I like this one here. I've, I've photographed this and, and used it as a background for a digi card. So, you know... Uh, and Eileen, especially. Eileen, who does Digi, if she has anything like these kind of books or where she's done projects, you know, photograph your, your, your backgrounds here or your pages. Photograph your pages, and then you can use them to put text over and make your own Digi cards, birthday cards, get well cards, or just, you know, a quote, a poem, uh, you know, whatever you want, and just digitally add the words on top of your own background okay so this is all just scraped paint and then gone back in and played a little bit more on these <clears throat> um, 
I like the small ones are fun but just like when I do my art cards when that's very tiny it has a little bit of a challenge to doing them tiny you don't have to do them this tiny to make it a background for a card it can be a full it can be a poster size it doesn't matter because once you photograph it and then it's shrunk down to whatever size you know it's your whatever fits on your in your you know your program and and you just digi over the top of it so um but i just wanted to kind of show you that these kinds of things can be used for um for your digi work in the background so if you have any questions put them in caps and if you're watching over on youtube thanks for watching over there I'm just going to do a little bit of some desk journal flips for this segment just to kind of show you some backgrounds and uh, do a little work in the new magazine journal because you can do all the same type of thing it's all a bunch of scraping paint adding collage whether you're doing it in from a blank page like these whether you're starting with a book an altered book a magazine an altered magazine whether you cut it in half or have full size it's all kind of the same thing it's collage paint mixed media it's it's you know it's essentially all the same type of process and it's all I all of them I use craft paint just I like deco art Americana but whatever kind of craft paint because I found the craft paint once it's dry see here I had to add a piece of tape that started coming apart right there um, once you start um, if you use a craft paint and let it dry make sure it's dry because if it's damp it'll stick once it's dry then it won't your pages won't stick together so hey Kathy Kaberg dragonfly anybody else Kimberly I think I said hi if I miss saying hi to you good morning some of these I've done on show here or there but mostly it's just you know play off you know and, and y'all see me do it's the same thing when you see me do my art cards my art journals all of it it's all kind of the same process with just paint collage yeah uh <laughs> Uh, and see like here this one just has just a couple pieces of collage on so this is how this one started just you know you can still see the lines in other words it's not done anything to here's another one so these tiny ones are good if you're doing like ATC's art cards a little tiny bits uh, if you're doing large like cat we're using calendars and huge mm. images you're gonna have to have a bigger you know you're gonna need a bigger boat <laughs> <laughs> so yeah <laughs> so here again see that one started coming out put a little piece of tape so here most of the rest of this see it's just got little bits of um, collage pieces just glued in and then here's a few more finished ones let's see yeah so they're fun little books but it's not something I ever sit down. See, you, you see there's lots of unfinished things in here. It's not something I just sit down and do from cover to cover. Any of my desk journals are not that way. You're going to see I'm going to have chunks in here, chunks in here that there's nothing on. Uh, and then I'll just get tired of that book or it gets pretty full or three quarters full. And I just get a new book. Uh, but that doesn't mean I can't go back and put some more in here nothing stopping me from today going in here and working on this page it I don't these are not dated things now these books have dates in the front where I started them but that doesn't uh, prevent me from going back in and reusing that those books to scrape more paint in okay hey Mark Marilyn from afar thanks Miko for letting me know hey Marilyn Good to see you. Mar Artsy Maryland's kind of like my YouTube mod over there. Um, yeah, so, yeah, exactly. And if your kids... Now, here's the thing about these kind of things, though. They're an ongoing project. Like you said, you would like to do them with your kids. What I would recommend if you wanted to do something with your kids or your grandkids is get a magazine that's something, a theme that they're interested in. Let's say they like horses. 
I would get one magazine that's all horses, cut it in half, and glue just, a, you know, like two signature, you know, two bits instead of like, this is two full magazines. That can overwhelm kids. You give them too much, right? Or if you had a horse magazine, just cut it in half and glue just that half. And then have them work in one theme, but make sure it's a theme they like. And when you do it, make sure it's a theme you like, too. I always use, like, gardening, architecture, uh, travel. This one is art journals, you know, cut up uh, magazines on art journaling. Or, you know, whatever theme that you're going to be interested in. Because if you don't, just like I use my example of... Um, my abandoned places... Um, altered book if you don't like altered places you're not going to stick with this book for long so you want to find a book journal magazine or whatever if you're going to use images that um that that they're going to enjoy or you won't stick with it <laughs> child or adult so here's the other little one i'll show you this one real quick is this the one i just showed yeah let's see yeah so this is the other one. It's the purple one. So here's just some green paint scrape. This one just has, a, you know, here's some scrape paint. So I had some blue paint left on my palette. Just scraped it in. Took a baby wipe and smeared it out, you know. Uh, there's some pages that are not done. Some that are. <clears throat> so, but this, that's what's fun about these little books like this. But you can't get stressed out about them. These, you have to have a debt. If you have a desk journal, whether it's little or larger, that's just, you've got to really think about it as just a play, a playground. If you, if you're going to you know, think every page has to be done or have, you know, <laughs> then it's going to stress you out not to have it finished. So if you're the kind of person that gets stressed out <laughs> about unfinished books or journals or you can't leave a journal and come back to it a year later because that's what I'll do with these you know if I just happen to have this sitting on my desk showing it to you and we do a project then I've left I'll scrape right in it but I'm not dating these pages you know so because that's not the purpose of these for me the purpose of these for me is just to use up bits of paint collage whatever and then maybe i'll go back and work in it or maybe you know maybe i'll just tape the pages so they don't fall apart <laughs> but I, I will tell you something like this is kind of fun if you do have a bunch of pages already you know some paint scraped on them it's fun to have something like this in your purse or your pocket and take it and you can doodle on it you know especially if you're a writer now again this is acrylic paint so you're going to have to either use a Posca or a Bic pen or something that will go over acrylic paint. Your Sharpies will not work over acrylic paint. They'll dry out in one page. So, um, <laughs> so you have to find what will write over acrylic paint. So you can just kind of see. And the sun got a little bright. I think I'm going to... Well, it's not too bad. I was going to say I can close the blinds because it's a little bright but so these are just a couple let's see look see how that one's coming apart that's you take a little piece of washi tape or something let me just grab a piece here <clears throat> here's here's some of my cat washi tape I'll get a it's got birds so let's put a let's put some cat heads on there <laughs> <laughs> Some little cat head. Well, then, uh, if you're a perfectionist, this kind of this kind of project's probably not for you. Just saying. unless you want to try to get over your perfectionism, then maybe you could try it. <laughs> Some blank pages here. Yeah, all this is acrylic paint. Um, but most of it's not like watered down. It's like full strength. Like, and, I, and so I scrape it in here, you know, um, but look, it's, you know, the spine warped a little, but it's not all that fluffy. It, you know, it paper, paper will hold up to acrylic paint. Well, uh, it's the water. It's how much water you put to it. 
that will, you know, affect it. Let's see here. Here's where I stamped one of my, that's one of my hand carved B stamps. <clears throat> so I was using it at some point, so I just stamped some in here. So maybe, you know, maybe some museum catalog. I don't know. I don't remember what I used. Here's where, now the little checkerboards here, I did that with just a gel pen. Then what you need, Valerie, is to have a book that you, in your head, you have to tell yourself, this is a book for me just to scrape paint, glue things in, you know, And not ever care if it's ever finished. Look. See, I got stuff just slapped in there. <laughs> Some um, Leonardo text. Bits of, you know, tissue paper, magazine images. So, yeah. So, these are just the little composition books. <clears throat> Let me get a sip of coffee, guys. And remember, I've been doing this like a long time. <laughs> <clears throat> that first one of these that I showed you, I think I started in 2007. So I've been working in a, on just these, ki these kinds of journals for 10 years. And probably before that, I was just using paper and keeping the papers to work on, you know, or cardstock, whatever. Or magazines. Yeah, well, there's uh, Miko, something like that. I don't know that you'll find a magazine of doors, but you could find an, a book, a hard, you know, a hardback book uh, of all doors. The, and the one that I'm using, the Abandoned Places one, this one does have quite a few doors in it. Um, this does have quite a few doors in it. And uh, if there's not a door, I'll put my own door. <laughs> this one, I think, was the last page that we worked in this book. On a, There's a video on it. I try to do as many videos as I can, guys, for you on this stuff. So that you can see how to do it. I can't show this very well under this camera, you know, because we're really zoomed in. Because I'm doing smaller things. But, um, yeah, this one's got quite a bit of doors in it. Okay, so now on to, and I'm not going to show you every single page, but I'll, I'll, I'll give it a go, you know. So let me close those blinds so that sun is kind of bright. Oh, that's a little better. There we go. Got a little bright. So, all right, so this one is from 2011. And um, the spine on this one came off of the edge or I think no wait what happened on this one I think the cover page tore so I just tore it out and then put some duct tape here or some glue some electrical tape in here to hold it so actually the spine of this one really was connected like that originally but something you know probably just from use uh, so I just tore that page out and then you know altered that so if y'all know, Mona Lisa is my muse, so I try to put her in everywhere. Now these, this book right here is, these are all the same size, and they're the leather journals. That's real leather from Italy. These books run about $40 at Barnes & Noble, and they have tons of different kind. They're, they're, but again, if you're going to use it for a year, then, you know, it's, it's not, it's $40 is not bad for one book a year. This one is eight and a half by uh, maybe about six, eight and a half by six, something like that, close to give or take a quarter inch. Um, some, oh, um, who was it? One of the girls sent me a book on marbles. 
<laughs> you can th trust me there's a book on everything if you have a used bookstore or a clearance section like my books a million has tons of books marked down to three dollars or five dollars or, or some go you know maybe they're marked down to fourteen dollars but depending on how much stuff is in it that you think you'll use over the years there are also calendars Every year, at, in the first week of February, all the calendars at Books A Million go on sale for $3. So I'll buy a bunch of those. Um, but you can find books on anything for like 2 or $3. If you if you just keep your eye open when you're out looking at, at used bookstores. Or new bookstores, for that matter. Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, they all have clearance sections. And how many people, it's just like a book of, of marbles. That's probably not going to be the best seller. You know what I'm saying? So that's the kind of book you'll find in clearance. <laughs> you'll find those kind of things in clearance because, you know, they're only going to sell so many books of marbles, right? Or whatever, you know. <laughs> okay, so now, uh, see, this is why I'm kind of zoomed in this far so that we're, uh, so we're close up on the pages here until we go to, until we go to uh, <laughs> work on something else. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of flip. and It's all the same thing. This is just bigger, you know, bigger than the, uh, than the little tiny books, the little composition books. And again, I may or may not come back to some pages and work in them. Uh, look, this one started kind of tearing up. I put washi tape. Now, let me let me say this. If you use washi tape to do any kind of binding, <laughs> you want to glue that in. Don't don't just put washi tape in. Now, I didn't mind doing it in the little composition book cuz it there was not a lot of stress on that little book, but washi tape's not made to be a binding thing. It's decorative, right? So, if you really want to use it for binding something, you really need to glue it. Um, yeah, tons, you know, I'm not, I don't write in, my writing is in uh, other books, other journals, other formats, notebooks, idea notebooks, my three ring binders, and my Moloskinas, the little black Molies. That's where I do my writing. So when I'm doing art journaling type books, I may have a word or two or a quote once in a while, but for me, most of my um, I don't diary. I don't diary an art journal in my art journals. They're uh, more, you know, just art than art journaling. Yeah, you can't, yeah, I know exactly, Xander, right? You can't bind a book with washi tape, <laughs> for sure. Like I said, I might use a piece or something if you glue it. You know, but don't try to bind a journal with washi tape for sure. Ask Sandra how she knows. <laughs> right, Sandra? <laughs> uh, there's some little bees there. Some of these are, you know, again, this one I think is from 2011. And the other, this next one's from 2012. So. This is when we went to our um, rescue, our uh, animal rescue shelter, that peacocks, that these hundred year old tortoises. These things, they look, these are, um, these things are like six feet around. <laughs> They're huge. These are like tortoises, not turtles. So. And look, there's a little tip in here. So you can do, you know, you can treat it as a more finished book if you want. Or you can, and you can journal in them and write in them, but you're going to have to use like a Posca pen or something that's going to go over acrylic paint. Because all this paint is just acrylic craft paint. No fancy paints in any of these. So here's some napkins. Um, there's this, um, I think those were some napkins. Um... I try to keep my napkin journal separate too. You know, I have a napkin journal that's just all art made from napkins. Um, there's another one of my hand carved stamps. Yeah, that that's what I do too. Now I might do a doodle or something in my quote books or writing books or a sketch or a thumbnail of an idea, but they're not any. They're not going to have 
pretty much are not going to have paint in them or anything. They're just going to be um, writing in them. And so, so many of my ideas are in my big three ring binders that if I have I just plain old ideas, they're going in those binders. Um, I annotate my books. So if I'm reading a book, my person, not library books now, you know, I mean my own personal books. <laughs> Will you ever talk about a spiritual journals, personal kind? Um, I probably could, Dana. Yeah, I have a spiritual journal. And those are very personal. You know, I mean, my I have uh, two current spiritual journals. This one is my... This one is my uh, main one here. It's one of these books. like They're like a binder. Like what, the old scrapbook binders. This one's my spiritual journal. <clears throat> um, your hand car stands? <laughs> no. It's a... Uh, it's, uh, Hermit, how do you say his, oh, I never can say his first name right. It's Bosch. That's who it is, <laughs> the artist. Uh, um, Hymerius, um, oh, anyway, y'all know who I'm talking about. And this one we did for Carrie in 2011 um, for her birthday. We did a, or, or she was going on a trip or something. So we did a little Carrie, this was from 2011. For our I carry a little um, a little page for her. Yeah. This was um, some gold. I wanted to show how to use the. I actually did this on a pet on a, a stream. Well, it was on a stream, but they're not on YouTube. These are way before. Hieronymus. Thank you, Terry Trouble. Hieronymus. <laughs> I know, I get tongue twisted on it. Uh, so I wanted to show somebody or somebody asked how the gold paint uh, went on top of other paint or something. So we did some little um, gold, um, what do you call it, uh, bamboo leaves here or something. I don't remember. Here's just some doodles, some look, looks DNA or something there. DNA strands that we cut and played with. Um, so yeah, this one just has some stuff glued in it. There's no, you know, other than a background color. This page right there, I'm not going to show you because I took that. I took my um, this journal with us to Thanksgiving, a uh, family Thanksgiving. I think it was uh, right after some one of our family members passed away. Anyway, so everybody said what they were thankful for, and I wrote it all down on there. So that's kind of personal. That's that's probably the only page in this book that has writing on it. Just see, look, scraped paint. Hey, Julie Topaz, scraped paint. <clears throat> But these are my magazine journals. And I've probably done a few, worked on a couple of the pages on a stream back in, you know, 2011. Um, again, I've only got my videos on YouTube for the last, I think, around three years now. But, you know, I'm streaming for almost seven. So a lot of this stuff was on YouTube. And we don't, they're not saved because we only have limited amount of saverage. <laughs> And we have so much uh, amount of storage space on Ustream, uh, unless you pay extra for it. So um, I only have a couple, you know, I have a few videos on there. And, and then they tell you, your limit, you know, we're going to start deleting your videos. Uh, and so, you know, you got to kind of pick and choose which ones you want to keep. Or I download them to, I save them myself, you know. But I've only been uploading to uh, Ustream. I mean, I've only been uploading to YouTube for about three years. <laughs> and then again, here's a couple pages with just some scrape paint. Huh. 
honeycomb and one of my hand carved beasts and different hand carved beasts yeah, look like honeycomb so some more scrape paint just some excess collage bits but this would be a good one to show you like how you can take it you know to scrape because this one's already got some smeared paint on it but I really want to work I want to do the same type of thing in this journal here it's all kind of the same thing I know it did. Yeah, we, um, you stream a few years ago said, okay, we're going to limit your, uh, how much you can save. So we were all scrambling to save three or four years worth of each other's videos. <laughs> okay, so then I have a few pages here where there's just nothing. Then a scrape paint again. So again, these are just, um, my little, um, desk journals and that's what I call them I, that and it, it doesn't literally have to sit on my desk it can sit like on the table next to me or somewhere handy it just has to be close by where you're going to use it some scrape paint what did you make the beast um I probably the small one I probably used a uh, magic rub eraser the white plastic erasers the larger B was probably some of the rubber carving stuff that you get from speedball you know that's it's usually it's about this thick and you could actually carve front and back if it's anything bigger than your this size right here your little rubber erasers. If it's bigger than that, then I've used the speedball rubber carving st stuff. Do you ever do single sided? Uh, they match the opposite. When I do a double page spread, I like them to go together. I mean, like ugh, this one here, this doesn't really go. I mean, that's a different blue than this. It's, in other words, I didn't carry this over to this page, but I like to do a double page spread. So if I'm scraping paint, I'm scraping, see, I'm scraping on both sides. I, I like them to be cohesive. I don't, that's just me. I mean, I've done the, uh, you know, one thing here, one thing there, but it's, it goes against my grain. You know, I like it to be, a, if it's a double page spread, let's make it one. Okay, so here's a, probably about, other than that, there's probably about 20 pages there at the end. So this one was from 2011. And I got some, like, ribbons, hang, bookmark things hanging off. This is just some of that, um, you know, the scrapbook twine thing. A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So if you keep something like this, it, either in the front of your book or somehow you remember, you know, because these kind of things, you don't do these in a day. Remember, I designated one a year. One a year. <laughs> But I also worked in other books, other projects, other art journals, mixed media journals, sketchbooks, you know, and commission work and idea books. So I'm always working in a lot of books. Okay, so here, let me show you this one real quick. Okay, this one was from 2012. Although I do remember picking this up when I showed a flip of the uh, flip of these one day, and um, I showed that you could take and doodle on top of like a mix, you know, scrape paint. Now it's got to be a pen or a pen or a, you know, something that's going to go over your acrylic paint. And and I did a little doodle on this one here, just to show you that wasn't from 2012. It was probably more like from a couple years ago, maybe. I started a scrapbook and have the two-page. Yeah, the two-page spread ingrained when you do scrapbook. Yeah, Terry. Or my when I did scrapbooking and I did it a lot. I mean, I'd like dedicate. It seems like I go through uh, phases where I get into one thing. Like I did ATC solid for four years. Nothing but ATC swaps, groups, Yahoo groups, swaps for just four years. Nothing but ATCs. Then I and but throughout the time I would say there was probably four years, five years of real heavy scrapbooking when the grands were little. 
I scrapbooked a ton when they were little. Uh, I, I can still throw together, you know, you saw those two uh, page, those two framed pages that I did that I hang in, the, in my house and keep, you know, I, I can still throw together a scrapbook page here and there. But I don't do it, you know, like I did heavily when the scrapbook stores, design teams, product reviews, two mm. peas in a bucket, you know, that whole thing. <laughs> And um, and then when I was in in the eighties, I did calligraphy. Um, so I did calligraphy for a long time. I've always done some kind of pencil work, uh, uh, you know, uh, portraits or some kind of uh, prism. And I just pulled my Prismacolor pens because that's what I've always used for years and years. Uh, pencil work, but I kind of got out of it when I started streaming. I started getting out of doing portraits and commissions and stuff until my family said, um, you're doing a lot of free stuff on stream. You're not selling anything. <laughs> you're just giving away everything, which I'll give away my ideas all day long, which is what I do. But, you know, I, I do have to make some money. <laughs> so, anyway. Uh, thanks. Yeah, I, I do have... Um, uh, I've, I've, I've done a couple scrapbook flips, not many, because I haven't really done scrapbooking that much since, I was, since I've been streaming. I mean, I still did some, but I never, and I did a few scrapbooking process videos, but not heavily, you know. So, if you can see the little cave right down there, painted that in. I titled this one Mirage. I wrote it down there and put a piece of tape on it. <laughs> a button. Thanks, Terry. Yeah, I mean, I share every process, all my supplies that I use. I don't hold any secrets back that I know of. I mean, you know, uh, I, I share everything I use, my organization, the supplies I use, my techniques. You know, I just put it all out there and hopefully people will you know I like to get people to try things you know if it just means scraping paint in a journal <laughs> scrape some paint you know <laughs> scrape some paint so this one was from 2012 with a few additions here and there if somebody asks me how to do something, I might just grab this book and do something in it. But <laughs> I'm not the big enabler. There are a big <clears throat> Eileen. There are bigger enablers than me in this group. <laughs> just saying. Just saying. This was probably where we did some smack and dragon. With the dilutions, let me let me spit on it and see if that moves. I don't know, it's not moving, so it may not be dilutions. Or it's just so old, it's just so old, it's not moving. You know, hey Scoobs, aw, oh good, you got the grandbaby. Lucky you, Scoobs. Enjoy. You don't have a cute little fodder book in front of me. Because of Eileen. <laughs> it's all Eileen's fault. That's what Janet says. Janet always says it's all Eileen's fault. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So, I think after, after 12, I kind of went into the magazine journals. 13, 14, well, no, it was probably kind of crossed over because I started doing more of the magazine journals and it's all the same kind of thing. You know, I've got three big magazine journals over there that um, you'd kind of do the same thing. If you have a magazine journal, which is, and all that, has, it doesn't even have to be two magazines glued together. It can just be one old magazine. Take a magazine and scrape your paint in it. But my, my recommendation or my tip will be if you scrape some acrylic paint in a magazine or any journal, make sure you heat gun it or let it dry before you close it. Because once you close acrylic paint pages together, they're stuck. So you really need to have them dry. Make sure they're dry. 
And I know I say that all the time, but I don't want someone emailing me and say, oh, I did a magazine journal. All my pages are stuck together. Uh, did you let it dry? <laughs> so, yeah. But you can see, look, they're pretty flat. It's got a little bit of a wave in it, but they're pretty flat. When you put um, acrylic paint on both sides, I'll look with Smack and Dragon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've done Smack and Dragon here too. That's kind of like a background page as well. You know, get, get something on your book. You know, whether it's a composition book, just some papers, whatever kind of uh, the dilute. Now, the thing about the dilutions, I love my dilutions books for um, collage and paint. But they, they have some kind of a coating on them that kind of resist water mediums it does so if you're doing a smack and dragon with the inks you got to really you're gonna have to put a lot on there because it, it kind of resists water it'll work because diane diane reevely i know i get uh dinah diane reevely dinah reevely anyway i get diane wakely and dina reevely yeah i get them mixed up anyway don't email me don't leave me a comment and i okay um, they use the dilutions inks, but you see how concentrated those inks are. They're very heavily concentrated. So they'll on the on the dilutions books because they're there's a coating of some kind. I'm not quite sure. Anyway, I use I use my uh, dilution books for um, acrylic paint and collage. Now, see how this one's a little stuck? That's because these are napkins. Napkins can, and I did not put any um, matte medium over this. If you put matte medium, you won't have any stickage. But I don't really have a problem with anything sticking with just paint and collage. Um, like here's some, probably some smack and drag in here. But uh, if you really want to make sure your journals do not stick, Matte gold. I use golden matte medium. Diane Reevely. Dilutions. Yeah, that's a good way to remember it, Mac. Diane Reevely. Dilutions. Yeah, there we go. And Dina Wakely. Yeah. Dennis stuff is literally dying. Yeah. My whirling dervish page. That's what Hubster calls me. This one actually goes this way. He calls me a whirling dervish. <laughs> See? Leftover stencils. So when you, like if you use your dilutions or whatever kind of sprays on a stencil, you know when you spray your stencil, that stencil is coated with good juicy inks. You don't want to waste that. So if you smack that excess ink that's left over on the stencil onto your page, you know, you're not wasting it. So I don't know how interesting this is, but what I'm really trying to show y'all is that it's ongoing. It's an ongoing, imperfect process. Look, just some random collage stuff, random paint scraping. Some is further along than others. And then here's a here's just a section right here in the middle. I think I thought, you know, I better go do some in the, from the back now. So I think this is what's left over from going front to back. Because see, it started to warp. <laughs> and some is, you know, I can tell it's dilutions because see how vibrant it is. This is like, you know, dilutions ink. Or, you know, that one's probably got dilutions in the background and paint over the top. Bye! Bye, Mac! So.
so random fish this is a turtle uh, well <laughs> this is a turtle uh, out of a calendar and I think this quote was on the the calendar and it says behold the turtle he makes progress only when he sticks his neck out <laughs> So that's, you know, that's about what you're going to see in any kind of journaling in here. So if you have any questions, put them in caps. If you're watching a recording, thanks for watching. So, yeah, these are not meant to, I mean, although some pages are finished, they're, it's not really meant to end up being finished although I might get a you know urge to go finish something in one but for the most part they are um, where I keep bits of stuff and it just makes me happy to go back and look at them you know There's there's two of my B card stamps. There's a larger one and a smaller one. And these two, I love this page because her outfit looks so much like a column that I kind of tied those two themes together. Yeah, I, I like these books. But again, you know, you keep it, each one is about a year. This one I call Ponytails. And this page, I love this page. Let me tell you what happened with this page. I was tearing out a face out of a mag I needed a half a face so I tore a half a face so I think off of her or him I don't even remember which now and the magazine the magazine it was a fashion magazine closed and the other half of the face fell just like that so half of the page I torn and then it in the see-through from the other side of the fashion page was the other face I said, oh my gosh, look how awesome that is. So I tore I tore them both out and made this page out of that. Love that page right there. And I love my ponytails. Love my ponytails. And that's the end of this one from 2012. And again, then I, you know, went into probably this big mama jamba guest journal here and again it's just the same type of thing just bigger I did a few sketches in this we did another rabbit trail page in here let's see well I just did a little bit of a flip in this earlier but anyway it's bigger and uh, so you can do this kind of thing in any any book so you know, then I did the magazine journals, and I have a bunch of these, I think I have three, maybe four, and I think I made a fifth one, I don't know, I've made a lot of these to show, you know, and to show y'all how I made them, so this one is where the, this is the one where the spine really warped, this was my first one, this I think was my second one, and it's all kind of the same thing, but in a magazine journal, now we're going to transition over to our little book. Um, in a magazine journal, you have something already there to work with. So even though I did like collage stuff in, but you have imagery already there to play with. So you don't have to think up a color. You don't have to think, you know, um, like this one had everything on that was here and I added more stuff. Um, was orange or red or cream. So... Um, this one had blue and cream. This one had brown and pink. This one had yellow and orange or whatever. Or, you know, three colors maybe. 
so it's all the same exactly the same except um, except you add more or take away so I kind of call my magazine journals reverse collage because I'm reversing out things same thing for my altered books I'm reversing out things that are already there so I'm painting out so reversing it you know but it's all the same kind of thing just different uh, books yes I saw her one her uh, tweet where she she worked in her little magazine journal so again so this one kind of started coming apart so I just taped in some uh, uh, tape to kind of stabilize it but you see what I'm talking about this is all in a magazine so I have this one I think that this one was the second one I think this one was the second one this one I think was my first one and then I have two or three maybe four other ones that are um, that I did showing y'all how to make them and start them but you see look this these pairs were there on the magazine there's a text all over here so I scraped out I want I picked some colors from the image and scraped on paint this is more purposeful than a desk journal my desk journals are just like leftover paints you, you can do the same thing with your magazine journal you just have to kind of do flips where you can find things that are already there if you want to match the colors right um, but it can all be they can all be incorporated into whichever what you think you'll use it for whether you just want to scrape paint and throw down collage, whether you want to do more, a little bit more purposeful things like find, you know, going with the imagery in a book or a magazine. Okay, so there's that. And then, of course, you know, that doesn't include my sketchbooks or my faces journals or idea journals. So I'm always. I'm always working on this stuff, guys. Let me get a sip of my coffee that I moved over here. Okay. So, back to our current little magazine journal, which there's three parts on this. I'm not going to talk about how I made it or any of that stuff because there's already three parts on how we've worked on this. Okay. All right, so not much is done in here except where I've whited out text. Again, you can use gesso. Um, I just do a thin coat of, you know, inexpensive craft paint to white it out. And then you can go back and play. We've done a few pages like last week with the, um, with the magicals, with the magical powders, which are very vibrant and they're permanent that's what I like about the magicals is they're permanent so once you wet them down and dissolve them completely they uh, they're, they're permanent because they're like I think it's a powdered ink if you will where I love my dilution sprays they're not permanent but you know depending on what you want to do you know it just it, it's all it's all good to me <laughs> you know whatever so we did we did a few pages with oh here's one we did this page with the dilution I mean the um, magicals and we played with this one using some um, Posca paint pens Posca paint pens will go over your acrylic or your di anything Posca it's like acrylic paint and a pen um, and they come in different tip sizes and different um, this is like a bullet tip and uh, diff tons of colors and then you can just play on that and we did the Terry trouble so I put this is a Terry trouble quote pop is a pile of projects <laughs> so we just did that last week with put some little glasses and stuff on her with paint pens and some of these bubbles and you know, it's you gotta have a place to play. That's why I call this my mini magazine mind mapping idea collecting prompt playground. You can put all of that in there. This was already there, so we just kind of duplicated that font. Um, 
We didn't do too much. Here I started doodling here. Started doing some doodles there. But by the time, you know, you add your paint and doodles and stencil and um, whatever, it, it, you know, it fills up with just fun stuff. And then, if again, what I want to do with this one is I want to write some of my lists and things in this one. I cut out a picture of um, one of my uh, favorite artists, Dolly. <laughs> so... Um, again, it's all kind of the same thing, what, whichever book you want to work in. So I wanted to kind of do a couple pages, like here's some good with some good color that will show up well. Now I do need to get, let me get a couple pieces of uh, wax paper or something to put behind. I think I'll, oh, here's some. I'll just say I thought I used them all up. Because, especially if I'm going to use acrylic paint, uh, if you use acrylic paint in whatever journal, if you don't put something behind it, you might glue your pages together when you're slinging paint. So, I'm going to put, you know, some uh, parchment paper, wax paper, whatever I have, uh, so that I don't glue my pages together. I don't care if paint gets, you know, on the other, on the spine and stuff, uh, but I don't want my pages glued together. So I think this will be good enough right here to kind of show, I'll just kind of slide back and forth here, try to show what we're doing. Okay. Bye, Z! Xander got to go um, to a workshop with Seth Apter over the weekend. I haven't seen, I don't know if she streamed over the weekend. I wasn't here, you know, I was at the lake and hanging out with family, working on projects with Cam and stuff, so I don't know. But I'll have to go check and see if Xandra did, a, did any videos. Or maybe it'll be Wednesday. She's probably already left. Um, <clears throat> where she talks about what she did at Seth's um, workshop over the weekend. All right, so let's just play a little bit just to show you what you can do. Now, let's... <laughs> Let's say I had leftover red and blue, okay? Again, the magazine journal, if you want to use up your paint specifically to those colors, you're going to have to be flipping through the magazine and trying to find a page where those colors fit. And a lot of times you're not going to have time or you're not going to want to take the effort to do that. That's why I recommend a blank, even just a, a, a blank um, composition book to put your excess paint in because you just want to get rid of that paint off your palette and scrape it onto something. If you have to take the time to flip through a magazine journal to find a page where those colors are going to match, you're probably not going to do it. So I like my magazine journals to be more color specific. I don't know. <laughs> uh -huh. And my desk journals to be fling, fling, fling. Okay, so for instance, here we have some red. <clears throat> so I get some red. So this is more more specific play, right? And some teal color. I have some color sitting here, but maybe this one will be okay. This is a Bahama blue. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I do want to. Nah, I want a, kind of an, another blue. Maybe this one. Let's see. Peacock teal. Teal. Now I'm putting probably way too much paint out. I'll have to, I need a magazine. I mean, I'm going to need a desk journal to reuse, reuse all the rest of this stuff. Maybe I'll grab one to show you. Okay, so now we got red, uh, peacock teal, and Bahama blue. And again, these, you can get your Americana craft paints at the Ho Michaels or Hobby Lobby. Most of the time, you can get them on sale for like less than a dollar. Um, and if you're out of country, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I can't help you there. Yellow ochre. And maybe a little white. Which I didn't close the lid on this, so it's going to be, <clears throat> need a pokey tool. And maybe a little black. I don't know. I usually put black and white on a separate palette so I don't 
get it all mixed up in there. Okay, now let me get a baby wipe to keep my hands clean while we're playing. <clears throat> all right. So, my favorite, I like these little plastic palette knives. <coughs> Sip of coffee, guys. Um, so if you like to scrape paint, I'll show you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do finger painting, but I want to show y'all. I did post a picture where I put an example of what we're going to do. Um, did I keep it? Uh, it's on Twitter. Anyway, I called it Artist Camo. <laughs> well, your hand is camouflaged. It probably, it probably won't show up on my phone because it flashes out here, but I'll try. Um, let's see, I did, I took a few and, and picked my favorite one. Um, I think this is the one. This is the one I posted. And you can't see all the colors, but I did like three different pictures where your hand is almost camouflaged because of the paint. And so I was kind of giving y'all a tease about what we were going to do. <laughs> all right, so if you want to start by scraping paint, um, I'm going to just show you that, but then we're going to dig right in. So i got to have my baby wipes handy and hope the phone doesn't ring. <laughs> All right, so let's just say I want, uh, I'll pick up a little bit of the, the uh, yellow ochre. And so if I want to scrape in colors that match, see here's some red. I'm just picking up a little bit of red and try to kind of blend in things. Let's pick up some of that teal. So you, you see how we're going here? We're blending out. I'm going using the color theme that's on the page already to scrape. So if you like the scrapey look, then you want to use a palette knife. You want to use a palette knife to get that scrapey look. Okay, so let me just kind of show you that as close as I can. See how it kind of uh, breaks up. Kind of like Bob Ross when he does his mountain tops. That's that's the same type, type of thing he does. He'll take a palette knife and he does that break on top of his mountains. Same kind of thing. But today we're going to do we're going to do our camo thing. <laughs> so I'm going to just go ahead and go with it here. But I wanted to show you that if you like that palette knife look then you just put some paint on your palette knife and, and kind of you have to kind of let, let it do its thing. You're not going to be able to plan it exactly. You're going to have to roll with whatever happens. Okay. <laughs> camel, hand camel. Oh my goodness, you girls. But this is what we're going to do now. And I, I like thick, I like doing thick paint, but you got to remember to, you're going to have to let it dry well or heat gun it well. Or then when it's, you think it's dry, put some something between it. If you go on to another page because I like I said I I go kind of thick with the paint and that can be um, take a while to dry so I'm going with the same colors right but let's say um, I want to kind of really make it and I'm not cleaning my hands off that's how you get that camo look <laughs> Now, if you get a whole too much of one color and you're, uh, you know, you want to change it, have a baby wipe right next to you and kind of wipe it off. But, <clears throat> so, yeah, this is how, and, and I'm kind of scraping over it, but I'm also kind of blending at the same time. And kind of keep some of it not blended, you see, kind of not blended. So I'm going to go to another finger here and come and come up here with the... Get some of the yellow in there. Come over here, maybe a little bit more black on that picture. Then some blue, like right. I don't. Let's say I don't like that blue. Well, then let's get rid of that blue. Put some of our teal colors in here. So you see how you're kind of making it. Look how the scissors look like they're coming right out of that paint. See how that just looks like it's coming right out of that? And I'm just kind of switching fingers from color to color. Now, 
Let's put just a little bit more yellow up there, maybe a little more red. So this is just a way for you to play and have fun if there's anything on there you don't like. And this is just for your own personal little journal play, you know. <clears throat> Let's say I want some more red down here. Maybe a little bit more of the... Okay. Are y'all getting, uh, getting the uh, idea? <laughs> I mean, you can completely white out. Uh, and I say white out. I mean color out. Color out anything. And then I think I'll go with some black up here in the corner. Okay. Maybe I don't like that little bit of text there, so let's just let's put my own little thing there on that tag to make it like a like a one of those uh, yellow tags there. And you can paint with brushes too, guys. But if you really want a freed up experience, then just paint with your hands. Okay. So now let me remove the things there and see. And then we can dry it with the heat gun. And this is why my heat gun looks like this. <laughs> it looks like this. My 20, 25 year old heat gun looks like this because it's years of paint build up. And now we're going to dry this. And some of it's kind of thick. So it's going to take a minute, right? Or you can kind of scrape some of the excess off if you're impatient. And if you really want to get down there in the crack, then take a paintbrush and get down in there. Keep your heat gun moving because if you got a little image from the magazine, that'll bubble up. Let me do it on purpose so I can show you. Now it's not wanting to. It's doing a little bit. But if you if you overheat up the magazine part, it can bubble the page. So keep your heat gun moving. Okay, so let me kind of make sure that nothing's moving. But even if there's anything you even suspect might be damp still, then, you know, keep something between the page until it's completely dry. Otherwise, you'll come back and, and the pages will be stuck together. As long as it's 100% dry, I never really have any problem with Americana craft paint sticking. So, you know, there you go. Then you can go in here and do whatever you can write more with the again the poscas uh sharpies won't work sharpies will dry out on acrylic paint so you really need a paint pen you know whether it's a uh, a sharpie poster paint pen now you can use something like that like the sharpie you know they're called uh white water-based paint okay i don't like the oil base this is the water base but uh, Sharpie paint pens or your Posca paint pens, but just a Sharpie marker that it'll acrylic paint will dry that out. Okay, so any questions on that or anything? So now, let just for the example, I have this leftover paint. Let's just say I'm done for the you know the the painting session, or or I'm gonna use some different colors. And I don't want to waste that. That's when you pick up one of your your desk journals and just find a page. There may I right, look. Here's a page that I just happen to flip through. Well, let's. I don't want to use something with an image. Let's just use a blank page because that's my point here. My point is is taking and then using and just scraping off so that you're not wasting you're not wasting that paint that's sitting in your palette right 
So whether you scrape it off or take a baby wipe and pick it up on a baby wipe and just blend, you know, blend it off here. So however you want to do it, that way you're not wasting paint. So now here we go. We have, we have a page here ready for something else. And that's, a, that's what I love about a desk journal is that it's a place for you to use up your collage scraps or your, you know, and if you're doing collage and you got your matte medium right there and you got a bunch of, you know, leftover bits, then just slap some matte medium on there and, and put your collage bits in there while you're doing it all at the same time. So you got to kind of keep it handy. Now let me dry this. But it's just another way to have more creativity, more fun, more ideas. Dana, anybody else I missed? Thanks everybody for being here. All right, so now I always make sure it's dry. If nothing's smearing, you know, you want to make sure it's dry. So let's see. Let's just flip to here. We go. All right. So let's. I got some excess red here. Let's put that on there. And even if it's just that much. Got a little blue. Let me just get that off my hand. Now dry this and move on. I don't know that this will ever be anything. But I'm not wasting the paint. <laughs> so that's why you have a, um, a um, desk journal. To do that kind of stuff. You can do the same kind of thing in a magazine journal, but if you're wanting to coordinate your colors instead of you're having to dig around, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to um, flip through and see. Let's just say I had the extra red, white, and black. Now I'm gonna have to find some place where I can use that. I may or may not find somewhere I can use that. Right? Happens that we just came upon this. <laughs> I am going to go ahead and put some more yellow ochre out because I want that color. And a little bit, do I want any teal on this or just, I think I want a little bit of green. And I have some of these colors out already on my desk because I was using them over the weekend. Alright, so now uh, I'm going to go, instead of the teal colors, I'm going to use some uh, olive green, red, yellow ochre. Alright, so I'm going to pick up some of the red. This already had some, I had some other doodles going on here too. Oh wait, let me, hang on. Let me just fling a little bit of paper between here. Because, again, I don't care if it gets on the bind, the sides, but I don't want to glue my pages together. A, a good idea is to always have some wax paper or some parchment paper in each of your books. If you're working on multiple books, have some wax paper Kind of like I do my color books, I try to keep a, a piece of black cardstock in every color book I'm working on. So I don't have to go try to dig up something to keep in between. Um, so let me put a little bit of black. And see, I'm not being neat about it. I'm, I'm purposefully be messy, if you can't. Alright, so like I don't want those white things there. Let's just kind of get rid of that. It's maybe a little bit of the yellow ochre. Say, camouflage. <laughs> and maybe a little bit of the green. And again, if you want to really get down in there in the crevices, I got some brushes sitting here somewhere. Then just, you know, take some of your paint and get down in the crevice. Now, that's the place that you're going to have the most stickage if you're not careful, though. Because that's the last place on a page that will dry. So you want to really make sure that if you do get in there with the brush in the crevice, that you also um, 
that's the place you really want it to dry. Okay. You're welcome, Clarissa, CC. Good to have you. Thanks for visiting. Anybody else that comes and goes. Okay, so like this. Maybe a little bit more green right there. Maybe a little bit more yellow right there. But see how fun this is? Hey, scrapbook corner. See how fun this is? All right, like, I don't like that blue. I, I mean, I kind of like that little face, but I'm not crazy about that blue. So I'm just going to get rid of that. I'll leave that little face there. But I'm going to put in here uh, yellow, the yellow color. Maybe a little green down here. A little bit more red right up there. And maybe a little more swipe of green in there. See? Like that. All right, now I'm going to dry this. And you can cover up the faces too. You can put your own faces on top of the faces. Or decorate the faces, or, you know, like, let's see here what we can do. Hang on. Got to get it dry, though, even before you go over it with any paint pens. Um, let's say, okay, now I'm going to move the paper just for a minute, and I can probably move this. It's kind of distracting, too. Okay, so let's say maybe you want her to have, like, let's have her have a hay. Let's make them angels. Uh, maybe she has a wing here. Let's put a halo on her. Maybe her wing's over this away. It could be the muses. You know, this is the part where you take your time and have fun and doodle. But don't be stressing. <laughs> Because then you defeat the purpose of the fun of it. See, something like this. like that. And just so you have fun. It's just a place for you to have fun. Loosen up. That's why I call it the playground. You know. I'm sure a lot of people call their journals or books their playground. <laughs> okay, now let me dry that because that is paint. That white is paint. Um, I saw you, I did see, I did message you back, Scrapbook Corner, on you wanted me to do a, I saw one message, I wasn't home all weekend, uh, well, half the weekend, and I don't know which unicorn, what book is it in? You wanted me to color a unicorn in pastels, but I don't know what book it was in. So you have to tell me what book. <laughs> I'm working in 
20 color books. I don't know which one you saw the unicorn in. So, yeah. You have to give me a... Hey, Orla! Alright, so let's pick something else. Let's just go to... An, again, make sure that's dry because I don't want to come back and have this page glued together. But that's what's fun about a magazine journal, you know? Is you can just play and do whatever. Just based on the colors. Yeah, you don't know either. Oh, I don't know either. If we come across a unicorn, yeah. All right, so now I have still have some green, and I have a little bit of yellow ochre. I need a little bit more red. Let's put a little bit of red. Um, I think I need some orange. Let me get some orange off my shelf. Maybe these two oranges. Got a saffron yellow color here. I'll put a little of that, a little bit of orange. See, I get these crusty orange. Okay, let's go with those because I still have black and white there. So, and see, I, this is dry now on my hand, except for that black. That's dry, so I'm just going to keep going, keep rolling with it. Yeah, sorry, I don't know which one. Okay. Let's go with this page and see what we can do. I'm basing it on the colors, not basing it on any of the image. Like, I may not like any of this. So let's just, you know, let's just, just kind of cover that up. Maybe just leave a little bit of it. Like, there's pink on the edge. I may not want that. But I know I'm going to want these colors over there, too. Now, I, the main color I'm seeing here is the orange, a little bit of the red. See, this is why I put a paper behind you. We don't want to glue our papers together. And some green. And you just see a little bit of something peeking through to play with. Maybe some black, too. So this is just how you can get real messy with your paints. And I'm not, I'm not going to do every page like this. But, you know, I'm just showing you some more ways that you can do your pages. Maybe some white right there. That will be kind of good. And some more red. Probably need some nice bright pink in here. Or purple. Let's see what pink. Oh, here's some peony pink. Let's throw a little peony pink in here. Oh, will you answer question? Pause it. Um, I, I haven't had a chance to really check all my mails and comments and stuff, scrapbooker. Because I, I haven't been home. I had a busy weekend with the family, so I'll try to get to it. <laughs> okay, so there you go. I'm not really liking the teal there, so I think I'm going to go back with the green there. I want to keep it kind of that gardeny look, so I'm going to get rid of the green. There we go. So the, here's just like kind of, you just see a little bit of something. And again, once this is dry, you can go in here and add some collage stuff okay all right so now let me uh, dry this again <laughs> Yeah, staples. Um, Lisa used uh, FedEx, I think. FedEx or UPS to have hers cut. So, yeah, you can use a, uh, a uh, office supply or copy place that will cut your magazines. I think ter um, Lisa said it cost her $1.35, $1.50, something like that. Yeah, and like Terry just said, call ahead to make sure they do cut them. Because every, every place might be different. So 
so even if you cover up everything on the page you based your colors off of something on the page I mean we can still cover up oh we could cover up all that too but we based our colors on the green the pink and the orange and threw in a little bit of black and white you know but now I could take my I could take my uh, palette knife here and let's just get some white paint here and again you can do scrape on there if you don't like how much it's scraped or where it's scraped then you take a baby wipe and you can kind of blend it out or remove it while it's wet do all kinds of things you know and this is how you get new ideas or uh, a, just a page to play on yeah exactly Terry every place is going to be uh, different for sure as to where they're going to cut or not so there you go see all right let's try that again and see by the time you put all these layers of paint the pages are pretty thick even for a magazine that's why that's why when you see I show my magazine journals they're not wrinkly I mean they, they they wobble a little but they're not like big hunks of of wrinkles it's because the paint almost levels the pages out Yeah, it's not hard to cut the magazine, but it's time consuming, especially because you want to be careful. If you're using an X-Acto knife and a metal ruler, you want to take your time. You don't want to try to hurry through that and slice your finger. You know, Lisa, I think she said she did one and it took her so long that she did the second one with the, at the, at FedEx or whatever it was. So let's take that out and there you go, see? And then again, if you want to do, um, you know, writing or journaling or um, let's just, let me get my uh, black one. Where's my black one? Oh. Here. You know? Or, you know what? Instead of the Posca, because everybody may, may have ink and may not have that. Let's see. I'm going to take... We did this in the magazine journal a few years ago. Take your, take your, um, oh, I got this one on tight. Where's my, I always have a pair of pliers handy to put <laughs> something that's tight. Um, just write, write with the uh, stopper. And if it starts, look, it's starting to peel. I'll just like hold my hand over the trash and like roll off some of the excess paint <laughs> until you want to get to your craft scrubby. Because it builds up, the acrylic paint does. Okay, so let's take our, um, let's take our little stopper. Now I'm not going to squeeze. Um, I'm not going to squeeze. If I very, if I squeeze, it's going to be so minimal, I can't even tell you how minimal. Okay, so let's just do a little and I'm just kind of more or less scratching it rather than squeezing it Give it that scratchy look to the writing. You like that effect? <laughs> yeah, and Rebecca said her small town printer didn't charge her for cutting. So. Now, let me say this. This is very wet now. That ink is very wet. You, 
I'm going to hit it with the heat gun, but I also may need to wick. Kind of like when I show y'all in calligraphy where you have to wick it up. Take a Kleenex. If you got excess ink, you're going to have to wick it up. Or you're just going to have to let this sit for a while. Because uh, maybe I shouldn't have done this because now it's going to be hard to go to another page. So you wick up the excess ink. <laughs> uh, because um, this is going to take a while to dry. Wet ink. And even when you think ink is dry, it may not be dry. But I'm going to try to get some of the excess up. And we'll try to dry it. And I'll put a, I'll make sure and put a paper between this. Because I'm not going to trust this to be dry until like tomorrow. Alright, so let me go ahead and hit it with a heat gun. Because ink always looks like it's dry, but it rarely is. <laughs> Yes, you gotta have a craft scrubby. I'll show you what it looks like. Hang on. Ranger, I think, is the one that makes them. They look like this. They almost look like a pumice. It's like it's nothing. It's like air. But it's so funny. You would think, well, it just looks like a piece of styrofoam. It looks like a piece of styrofoam. And uh, it's light as a feather, but this takes off, this takes off dilutions ink off your hands. It takes magical powder off your hands. They're amazing. <laughs> They're called craft scrubbies by Ranger. Okay, now I know that's not dry. Let me see. Let me get a paper towel. And we'll, I'll just put a paper towel in here. Because I know that's going to not dry. And if I close it, it'll either stick or just smear. It is, isn't it, Terry? Okay, so I'm just going to close that on the on the paper towel. Okay, let's go on to another. All right, here's some with, uh, uh, I'm trying to think, of, I'm trying to use some of these colors. All right, some blue, green. I mean, some red and green. And maybe now I need a, a blue. Let's go. Okay, let's go, and I'm almost out of space on here, so let me just get another palette here. And these, this is dried paint. And they're just coffee lids. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to put some blue and maybe a little bit more of a yellow, the yellow ochre or the moon, here's moon yellow. It's kind of like a light version of yellow ochre. And then we have red, I have some green. All right, let me put my little pieces of parchment back in there. Yeah, they are, aren't they, Terry? The craft scrubbies are magic. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start with the blue and the moon yellow here and then go with some red, maybe a little green. But um, so, yeah, I'm going to go with both those colors. I'm just kind of going back up. again. If you want to get down there in the in the crevice, just get in there with the brush because your finger is not going to fit down in there. Okay, let's get some blue and yellow on here, and now I'll get in here with a, just a touch of red here. Maybe some red down here, and then go back to the blue. And a little bit of the moon yellow. Maybe I'll get rid of some of that text. Leave a little bit of those flowers. Some kind of a little clown guy there. Something. It's not a scary clown. Don't freak out. Maybe I'll leave some of that white there. But I want to get rid of some of this blue border there. Go back to the red. And see, I'm just kind of, you know smeary if you want this messy look you can be more you know <laughs> instead of the 
plate. No, I'm not dumping paint. I, I'm controlling how much I put on my fingers. I'm not going to dump paint on there. I mean, if you had a little blob, but I'm not dumping paint on here. I'm, I'm controlling it with how much I put on here, believe it or not. <laughs> I really am <laughs> controlling how much goes on. Okay, there we go. So, there's two more pages colored in. And this is just this is just showing you how to take whatever image is on the magazine and mm -hmm. using the colors that are in there. Even if you covered up every single thing, look, there's some flowers. Even if you covered up every bit of it, the color themes, you know, just the color. Yeah, if you can't stand to get your hands dirty, this project's not for you. <laughs> let's just let's just admit it. <laughs> let's just admit it. I don't know. For me, I mean, I guess if you had skin tight gloves, but even then, I'm thinking the plastic on the gloves, the latex. If you have latex on, I think it might affect. It might be different than the actual texture of your fingers. You could try it if you, you know, but I just can't see. This is an ongoing project. Every time I have leftover paint, I'm doing this. If you, every time you have leftover paint, if you want to stop, get gloves on and all that, that's fine if you want to do that. I know myself I'm not going to do that. I would never do that. I just know myself. <laughs> And if you're just, if you don't like touching paint, now go remember, Jean may not, or she may be asleep, or she may, you know, uh, be on the iPad. Jean, when we first started getting Jean into painting in a journal, the thought of touching paint on her fingers totally freaked her out. You know what, where Jean's come now? Oh my gosh. Now, you could use a baby wipe. However, you're probably still going to get some on your fingers using a baby wipe. But let's find a page here with some more of those colors. Okay, here's some of these colors. All right, I'm going to, you can use a baby wipe. All right, pick up the ba pick up your paint on a baby wipe and try it. Here's some yellow. It's smoother the your your application is not going to have the textury bits that you have and I should have put some paper between here I'm going to glue my sheets together but if you don't want to touch paint you know you could try it with a baby wipe you know like this then you're not actually touching it <laughs> that, does that make you feel any better I don't know Where's my black? Let's put some black. Get a little clean spot here. See, when I'm moving around, look, the paint's getting on my hand. So, either way, it's probably going to get on you. But it's not like cooties or anything. <laughs> I know, didn't she? And look how far she's come, right, Julie? All right, so there we go. There's just some with, uh, let me put a little green over there. Maybe just a touch of pink right in there. I mean, you know, if, and look how colorful this one is. And I don't, I mean, I see one little, you know, little vignette right there. And even that I may not like too much. <laughs> I can cover it up. Yeah. So do it with the baby wipe. But again, when I switched the side of the baby wipe to a clean spot, it got on my hands. So, yeah. Okay, so now let's maybe take the ink again and let's let's just say 
chill, people, chill. Chill with the paint. Be one with the paint. Chill with the paint. <laughs> Let's make that look like a C there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to need to wick that little bit right there, I can tell. Cool idea, Eileen said. Painting with your hands is fun when you have white cats that want a little petting. <laughs> Eileen, I think you need to lock the be the boys out of the room. <laughs> okay, I see it. This is going to take a while to dry if I don't wick it. So let me. <laughs> I'm going to wick up some of that excess ink there. Okay, again, I want another paper towel to put in here until I'm sure that's dry. So, um, y'all, y'all, uh, <laughs> see, y'all having fun with this or not? I mean, I don't know. You gotta, gotta play. Okay, this one might be fun to do some little trees on. All right, let's see what we got left here. Let's see. Got some orange and some red. Let's go with that. Again, if you really want to get down in the crevice, let me get you brushed in there. This could almost use a little brown, too. Let's see. Throw out a little brown. Got still got a little black there, a little brown. And I'm always, I just have a habit of going this way, but you can go, you know, don't have to necessarily uh, scrape paint in one direction. I'm just kind of, you know, doing it in a little bit of a hurry for you, so. Let's, uh, maybe I want some of that yellow color up in there, because I don't want that pink in the sky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm inspiring you good, Miko. I could almost use some gray, too. Let's go with a little gray. A little gray, a little brown, and just kind of move it around. Brown, Gray and brown and move it around. <laughs> oh, I forgot to put some papers between here. <laughs> so I don't stick my pages together. Okay, we'll do some little treeage on this one. How about that? Okay, I'm not loving the green right there. I think I'll go, let's go with the orange there. Or even some red. Because I'm going to cover this up with, with uh, Posca next. We're going to do Posca. Okay, all right. A little bit of gray. And let's go over here with some gray. And some of the brown. Oh, I just pulled a page out. See, I got it too saturated in there. All right, so here's what we do. This is a good example. Let's put this in here for a minute. Now this is where I'm going to take... Let's see, I think I'll take some electrical tape because it's black. <laughs> it's handy. I'm going to take some electrical tape. <clears throat>
and we're going to tape that down. Okay, that's good enough for now. I'll tape, I'll put another piece later. I just, oh no, I guess I'll put another piece now. I pulled the whole thing out. I wet the, I wet the spine too much. And uh, yeah, the spine got too wet, just so you know. And I, I pulled the page out of the book. So if you, and this is why you see sometimes in my, those little books, the little composition books, how some of the pages fell out. There you go. All right, now we're good. Let's go back to the brown and the orange and the red. The gray. All right, so I'm going to get some gray down here. Some red. I'm trying not to go in the same direction. I'm trying to go in a different direction just to show something different. Okay. Oh, Marilyn. Oh, Marilyn, did Marilyn say something? I missed something. It said Dee Dee Marilyn. Okay, I missed that. Oh, Marilyn said, good morning. Oh, okay. Hi, Marilyn. Uh, is that artsy Marilyn? I asked, uh, yeah, I did say hi to her earlier when you mentioned it. Okay, some more brown over here. And a little bit more gray. Maybe a little black in there. See, I'm picking where I'm putting things. You, you may not be able to tell, but I, you know, I'm kind of going with... <laughs> There's a little bit of a plan there. <laughs> There's a little bit of picking what I want to save and whatnot, you know? Okay, let's see. I think I need a little bit more. This seems a little orange right there. Maybe a little yellow. Okay, I'm liking this. Oh, except right here. I don't want that line. I don't want that uh, little box right there. Okay. Night, Miko! Oh, or did... Marilyn say goodnight. Thanks for being here, guys. All right, so now I'm going to dry this, and then we're going to do tree branches. Okay. Let me get my brush out of the water here. Now, instead of using the ink this time, I'm going to use a Posca. Okay, so I'm going to use these tree branches as my inspiration. So I'm just going to start with those and kind of go over them and around them. And, and I'm not trying to do, like, real nice lines. I'm doing almost purposefully scratching them, you know. And I'm going to carry them down. Maybe some come down here right off the page. Maybe this will be a trunk. We'll have a little thicker one down here. Maybe some roots going this way. Very scratchy. Kind of looks because of the dried branches in the orange. It kind of looks Halloween-y. <laughs> or it almost could look like a forest fire. Okay, Marilyn said good night. Good night, Marilyn. Sleep well. She's a she's an all-nighter girl. She's one of the uh, late night journal jammy journalers. <laughs> 
Car, Maryland. Thanks, Mika, for relaying. Finish your needle felt and stitch postcard, Dorothy. Now, let me say this, Dorothy, because <laughs> there's a couple other girls that have been have needle felted before. See, like y'all can't stand some of y'all can't stand to uh, have paint on your hands. I cannot stand to do needle felting. <laughs> the idea of the 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 sh sh slick needle going through felt um, gives me chills. <laughs> I can't do needle fill. I like it. Love it. It's beautiful when you see it, but I can't stand to, to do it. And I don't love chalk either. Pastels, because they're so dry. I don't know. It's just that feel of chalk. So I guess we all have our things we can't touch. But I'm going to, here's the thing. I admit to myself I can't do it, so I'm not going to. You know. I'm not going to try to force myself to do something that creeps me out. So, if touching paint. Although, Jean, i got to say, Jean, Jean's my inspiration. Jean is such an inspiration to so many people. And I don't know if she knows it, but she is. Lots of people don't like the feel of felt. Really, Dorothy, that's not a weird thing. Yeah, see, and what I, what I, I don't know about this piece in particular, but when I, especially when I do my collage, um, people go, well, what's that supposed to mean, or what's that, or what do you think that is? To me, I like people to see what they want to see, because what you see, and this is true of any, really true of any art, when you're at a museum and you're looking at an abstract painting, or, or, or you know, you, what you see in it. To me, what you see in the art is kind of like what's inside of you. Like what you what you view it as is coming from inside of you. So that's how somebody can take a, a Salvador Dali painting, for an example, and five people can see five totally different things. It's because there are five different people inside. So you're going to see different things. Know what I mean, Vern? <laughs> I know our Jean is such an inspiration. I'm just sitting here just drawing out little limbs, guys. No particular, you know, just kind of scratching some little limbs in. Some a little thicker and maybe some coming down. Making some little roots. I'm just trying to show y'all different things to do. Hey, Sarah. Different ideas with the different um, techniques and different products and different, you know. So, yeah. So we have a little bit more time for this segment. Then I will go get coffee and wash my hands and be back. Because, <laughs> you know. Hey, Sarah. So you have any questions or comments, let me know now. We're doing this. Okay, let me go back to one of the ones where we wrote something here. Let's see here. 
where I put down the see this this would have been on this side which is okay but I don't care if this transferred over so much but I wouldn't want the pages to stick together and that's where they would have stuck together if I hadn't put the uh, and it's still you know I, I'm it's a little iffy <laughs> where's the other one here okay that just had a little bit but you don't want your pages to stick you want to put something between them until you're a hundred percent um so these two are kind of similar in the way we did them the paint going this direction and then writing a big word on it whereas this one we kind of scruffed up the paint going different directions where did paint go wherever that page is is it this way We did this one. And so anyway, I hope you all enjoyed a little bit of the flip of my desk journals and get you all some ideas of, uh, you know, playing with color. Hmm, must have been the other way then. Did it go this way? The trees we just... did this one with those three colors but it's just a way for you to explore painting I mean uh, explore color themes and you know I don't know it's just a way to play that's why it's called a kind of a playground let's see I don't know what I did with our tree we just did because I taped the page back in. It can't be that hard to find. Here. <laughs> yeah, it's just a fun little you know a fun little play book to play in you know our magazine um, mini magazine mind mapping idea collecting prompt playground <laughs> thanks guys all right i think i've done enough in it today and it's you know see it, it gets fluffy but i keep a band around it I use a headband um or you know those journal bands you could add journal jewelry on it if you want you now. But yeah, it'll get messy. It'll get fluffy. Some pages might fall out if you get them too wet on the on the spine. It's if you get it in the spine. Um, and so you just tape it back in. You know, don't don't get all got a chill. Where's that chill page? <laughs> got a chill. And again, we talked about if you don't want to cut cut it yourself, take it to one um, office supplies, Max, Office Max, Staples, or you know FedEx, UPS, one of the stores. Call ahead and ask if they'll cut a magazine in half for you. Yeah, and again, guys, use a magazine that you know you're going to like: architecture, nature, gardening, a pet. Like if you have dogs or horses or cats, um, you know, and because you can, there's going to be colors on di all different magazines, a fashion magazine, um, any topic, but make it something you're going to have fun with. Otherwise, you won't stick with it. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and stop this sex segment and wash my hands and get some coffee, and we'll be back with you guys here in Ustream in a minute and if you're watching on YouTube thanks for watching and go play with some paint